In this video, I'm going to take a look at chemical reactions. So we'll start by reminding ourselves what we mean by elements. So you can see it's written on the board there. Elements are substances which contain only one type of atom. Hopefully you'll be familiar with the new term on the board, compounds. So these are substances that contain more than one type of atom that are chemically combined. So how do we go from elements to compounds? Of course, it's by chemical reactions. So now we've introduced what chemical reactions are, we'll look at the different ways elements can combine. So the first way we look at is between metals and non-metals. So the first thing we need to check is, do we know where the metals and the non-metals live on the periodic table? You can see I've added this red zigzag now. So we need to know that anything to the right of the zigzag, these are all non-metals, and anything to the left, these are all metals. Now hydrogen's a bit of a funny one. That's floating around in the middle there. This is a non-metal. So the example I'm going to use to explain how metals and non-metals combine is between lithium and fluorine. So there's lithium there at the top of group one. Remember these are the groups with three protons and therefore three electrons. And fluorine is at the top of group seven. There it is there. And it has nine protons and therefore nine electrons. So before we start, we're going to need um, electron shell diagrams for lithium and fluorine. So if you pause the video, and then I'll show you the answer. So there they are there. We'll start with lithium. Lithium's got a proton number of three. That's what that three P in red means in the nucleus. So three protons, and to keep the atom neutral. Remember, atoms must have no overall charge. It must therefore have three negative electrons. So we put two in the first shell and then one in the second shell. And that's the reason why this is in group one, because it's got one electron in its outermost shell or energy level. It's in period two because it's got two shells. So if we look at fluorine now, it's got a proton number or atomic number of nine, so nine protons in the nucleus. To keep it neutral, it needs nine electrons, two in the first shell, seven in the second outer shell. And therefore, it's in group seven, and it's in period two. Now the problem with these atoms at the moment is they're not actually very stable like this. And that's down to the fact that their outer shells aren't full. If you remember the group zero elements, the noble gases, they have a complete outer shell and that makes them very, very stable. And effectively, these two atoms here want to be like the noble gases. So they're after a full outer shell, which is a stable electron arrangement. So the best way they're going to achieve this, they can kind of help each other out if you like, is if lithium loses this electron and gives it to the fluorine, and underneath is a nice, full, stable electron arrangement, full out of shell. And if you imagine that electron goes across, it's going to sit here now. This fluorine atom would now have eight electrons in its outer shell. So therefore, the outer shell would now be full, stable electron arrangement. So you can see I've now shown that on the diagram. So I've taken the outer shell away now for the lithium. It's lost that outermost electron. Where is it? There it is there. That, by the way, is why I've shown one set of electrons as crosses and the other as dots. So what we've got to appreciate now is these particles, being very careful not to call them atoms now because they are no longer atoms. You'll see why in a moment. These particles are no longer neutral. That's why we can't call them atoms anymore. They've actually become charged. 
So let's think, well, why would they have charges on them? And it's all to do with the imbalance between the pluses and the minuses. If we think of lithium first, has it lost any protons? No. Still got three protons in the nucleus. So it's got three pluses, but only two minuses. So this is now positively charged because it's got one extra positive to negative. So we need to give it a positive charge. And if we think about the fluorine now, it's still got its nine protons, but it's got two, four, six, eight, ten electrons now. So this has a one minus charge. So these charged particles are what we call ions and not atoms. Remember, atoms are neutral. So these charged particles are what we call ions. And you can see I've added square brackets. And I've also changed the formula now at the top. So this is the lithium ion. And this is the fluoride, not fluorine, fluoride ion. And because these ions have got opposite charges, positive and negative, they're actually going to attract each other, just like the opposite poles of a magnet. And they'll become the compound now, more than one type of atom, lithium fluoride. So one for you to try now, how would sodium and chlorine form the compound sodium chloride? So obviously we need to start by looking at the atoms before anything happens. So sodium with its 11 protons and 11 electrons arranged 2, 8, 1. Chlorine, 17 protons, 17 electrons, 2, 8, 7. So sodium obviously loses that outermost electron, leaving a nice stable electron arrangement in the shell underneath. So because it's lost an electron, it's got one less electron to protons now. So it becomes a one plus ion, so Na plus sodium ion. The chlorine atom gains that electron, there it is there. So it's got one more negative to positive. So it becomes negatively charged. So we call this the Cl minus, the chloride ion. They've got opposite charges positive, negative, so they're going to attract each other and form sodium chloride. We'll just do a quick summary at this point. Metals and non-metals transfer electrons. So metals always lose their outer electrons and they form positively charged ions. The non-metal gains those electrons and forms a negatively charged ion. The oppositely charged ions attract each other and form the compound and they do this to achieve a stable outer electron arrangement. And the attraction between a positive and negatively charged ion is what we call an ionic bond. Now the other type of combination we need to look at is between two non-metals. So we're going to look at how two non-metals actually join together to form a compound. And the example I'm going to look at is between hydrogen and fluorine. So there's the electron shell diagrams for the hydrogen atom and the fluorine atom. So how do these combine? So instead of transferring the electrons between the two atoms, like metals and non-metals, two non-metals actually share their outer electrons. So you can see what I've done is I've, I've overlapped the outermost shells and there's a shared pair of electrons there. So the circle belongs to the fluorine, the cross belongs to hydrogen. So because they've done this, the fluorine has now actually got a stable outer electron arrangement because it's got two, four, six, eight electrons. The hydrogen Remember, this is the first shell, only needs two electrons. Well, it's got two electrons because the fluorine's 
kindly sharing that electron with the hydrogen. So this hydrogen atom now has a stable outer electron arrangement. So different to the metal and non-metal, when two non-metals combine, they actually share their outer electrons to achieve that stable electron arrangement. And they form what we call molecules. You can see I've drawn a, a loop around this entire thing now. So this is what we call a molecule. All a molecule is, is, is a small group of atoms that are held together by covalent bonds. So this type of bond here between the hydrogen and the fluorine, this shared pair of electrons, is what we call a covalent bond. And the compound formed, HF, is hydrogen fluoride. So one for you to try now to finish the video off. How would carbon and hydrogen, both non-metals, join together or bond together in a chemical reaction? And I'm going to give one clue. You need more than one hydrogen. So pause the video, have a go, and then I'll go through the answer. So if we start with a carbon atom, there it is with its outer shell of electrons shown, four electrons, and we'll take a hydrogen and overlap there. So you can see that the hydrogen is satisfied because it's got that stable outer electron arrangement of two electrons. Need another hydrogen and another one and another one. So in total we needed four hydrogens. The carbon satisfied now because it's got eight electrons and so this molecule, remember non-metals form molecules with these covalent bonds between the atoms, would have the formula CH4 and you may note that this is methane.